going on you guys? Hope you guys have been well. Today we're sitting down. We're going to take a look inside Adobe Premiere and check out how you color grade your videos after you're done editing them. So usually this is your last step. You've got your timeline set together. You've gone through After Effects and now it's time to add some color to your content. So let's get on in. So in this folder we have a bunch of clips from past adventures. We have some snowboarding, we have some stuff from Yosemite, some stuff from the beach. So let's drag and drop these inside the timeline. And usually your timeline will be set and ready and organized, unlike this one. So we have a bunch of clips here, and the first thing you want to do is click in the Project tab and go up to File, New, Adjustment Layer. Just recently I've started using adjustment layers to color correct my footage. I like being able to have my clips be completely raw underneath, or nested, but putting the color on top so I can adjust it later on. So we'll drag and drop it down, and we'll drag it to the end of that clip and then we'll hold down alt click and drag and then just shape it up for each of them so we'll give each clip their own adjustment layer there we go so we can go through the clip and see what we like there okay so I'll trim that so we got this clip from Mammoth, Misha spraying me. And then we'll cut that there. So with this clip, what you notice is that it's pretty dark. There's a shot on the GoPro Hero 5 and the sun is being hidden from the clouds. It's a little dark coming out straight out of the camera, but it's easily fixable. So we'll jump into the color tab. And when you first open up this tab, you're greeted by the histogram on the left you're greeted by the tools on the right and then you have your timeline your project bin and your program all laid out so the first thing we can dive into is the exposure with this we can bring it up to bring out the snow in the foreground so we can bring out all those pixels so it evens it out and the cool thing about editing on adjustment layers is that you can easily toggle off and on so you can see how your effect is working out which is a cool little thing that I find handy we can go into contrast and bump that up. Highlights, I'll scrub around that so you can see. So we can bring out the highlights if we want. We could bring out all that snow. And we could bring out the shadows. Drop the blacks a bit, bring out the whites. So now we went from a really dark and dull image to something that's bright and popping. And if you look to the left at the histogram, you could see all the pixels in here. So the bottom of it is all your darks, the top is all your whites, and you can see there's some of these pixels that are probably inside here that are completely clipped. So we could bring those highlights down and bring the exposure down. Sometimes I edit off of the histogram, sometimes I don't. It just really depends. It's a good tool for sure to keep track of your stuff. We bump up the saturation, and we could use the white balance selector, click it on the snow, I don't really use that. I'll just adjust it if I think it needs adjusting, which we don't. And then at the top, you can use LUTs. People are starting to use these LUTs. These are little presets that come inside of Adobe Premiere, and you can add it on to get a certain look. I don't really use these. I just edit without them. So this whole section is all self-explanatory. You got your exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, yada yada. Where the fun starts is when you go down into creative. So we can jump down into here, and we can open up any looks that we want. I don't do that. And you can go down to adjustments. You have faded film, sharpen, vibrance, and saturation. So if you want to add a fading film look, you would obviously bring that up. Bring it up all the way. You can see how it just doesn't look that nice. So you can bring it up a bit. Sharpening, I always bump up to 10. That's just one of the patterns that I have. And then you have vibrance and saturation. Now this is where it gets tricky. There's a lot of people that enjoy saturation and a lot of people that enjoy vibrance. I used to be a saturation kind of guy, but now I switched over. Vibrance is more of your smarter environment adjusting tools. So when you bump up the vibrance, it sees what it needs to be adjusted and adjusts it accordingly. Saturation just takes everything and just goes crazy with it. So I'll usually bump up the vibrance and drop down the saturation. 
and then we can go into the tint. This is just like the Adobe Lightroom split toning. So with the shadows, we can make it warmer, and the highlights make them cooler, and vice versa. And then we can add a balance to it. So if we want one to be more overwhelming than the other, we can go through that. So we can bring down the shadows into the blues, and the highlights into the warmer tones. And we could just mess around with that and see what we like. So far, so good. Now we can go into the curves. This is one of my favorite tools inside this piece of software. This tool is extremely powerful. You can crush the blacks, clip the whites, you can add contrast, take away contrast. You can mess with the reds, greens, and blues. You can do everything with this. So we'll drop down the blacks, we can raise the midtones, and raise the whites a bit. And then we'll crush some of the blacks. And then you can see that in the snow, there's a very big presence of blue. So to take that out, we can see that it's in the whites. So we can go into the highlights and drop it down just a bit. And then we can bring the green. Drop that down a bit. Snow's pretty tricky to mess with. So we can go back down to the saturation, drop that. Mess around with this. Put at zero for now. And since the blue is overwhelming in the snow, we can drop down to the hue saturation curve. And we could take away the saturation or we could increase the saturation. We'll put it back to normal. And you can adjust the colors specifically by clicking on any of these little dots. And since we want to target the blues, we click on blue. And then we could drop that down to take away the saturation. We could skip over to red, bump that up, and go over to yellow, bump up the oranges a bit so we could bring out those colors so they could pop more. And then we can go down to the color wheels. This is another great tool. I find that I like this more than the basic color correction tool at the top. This gives you more control, I feel like, of your midtones and shadows and highlights and kind of meshes the regular tone curve and then the hue and saturation curve. So with this, we can drop those shadows, raise the highlights, raise the midtones, and then you can go into the vignette and then you can add a vignette around it by bringing it to the left, which adds the darker corners in. And you can make it a little bit more round or you could feather it. Or you could bring it all the way to the right to make the corners white. There's a lot of adjusting in here, which is the cool thing about Adobe Premiere. It gives you all the tools you need to be able to edit your stuff properly, edit it the way that you want, and just go with it. Yeah, we won't do any vignetting on that. So there's clip one, and you can see already, it just brings out those colors. And we're using Protune, the Protune setting on the GoPro, which allows you to bring out more of that detail in post-production. So for this next clip, we're at Glacier Point. It's morning. We got there at 3 a.m. The sun's just now coming up. We're all hanging out on the side of the cliff. And the problem with this clip is that in the sky, the sun is taking over those white, or the highlights, and it's just blowing everything out. And then in the foreground, because the sun's behind the mountains, it's really dark. So you can see the histogram right here. There's a ton of pixels in the highlights. And then there's, there's a decent amount in the shadows, but there's not a lot in the midtone range, which is weird. So let's go into the basic color correction. And the first thing we'll do is adjust the temperature, make it a little bit warmer. You can bring out the exposure. When you look on the left, when I bring up the exposure, it brings all those pixels up. And it's just smushing everything at the top, which is the sky right there. Everything's just being completely crushed. So we'll go a little easy on that. And in turn, we'll bring down the highlights, up the contrast, up those shadows. Drop the blacks to keep that detail. And then the whites, I'll actually bring those down, which I never really bring down when the highlights are down. I usually bring the whites up and then vice versa. I don't really ever bring both down at the same time, but with this clip, I feel like we need to. Even bring more out of the shadows. Go. We can add a faded film look. And then add some vibrance. We can sharpen it. Put it to 10. Shadows are already blue, but we could bring those to orange. Bring the highlights there. And now we go from having the mounds be completely blue, we add some color to it, kind of balance it out. 
which is exactly what the tint balance is Brilliant. intended to do. You can go into the curves, drop the blacks, bring up those mid-tones, and kind of preserve those highlights down. You can bring up the blacks and crush those to add more of a film look. You can even go back and drop that a bit. And when we do a little before and after, this clip is already so much better. Go into the color wheels, you can adjust the shadows, and then the midtones directly, and then the highlights. In the shadows, I'll bring those over to orange, not so much green. And then the highlights, since I put the shadows at orange, I put the highlights at blue, and kind of keep that offset. And we can go into vignetting, and we can add a little bit of a vignette and feather it a bunch. And right there, I think we have a really good clip. And the cool thing about having the adjustment layer is that if I want to extend it onto another clip, and instead of having each clip have their own color correction on it, and it gets mixed up with your warp stabilizer, slow motion, anything, you can stretch it across your timeline so it can cover both clips. I will only stretch out that adjustment layer if both clips are from the same day or environment. Some of those color gradings don't really match up on everything, but it's good to keep everything organized and you can see it clip by clip. And if I wanted to go easy on this adjustment layer, I can go up to opacity and then drop it down to 50% and it dropped the color correction down to 50%. When you do it on the adjustment layer, you can have the full spectrum of editing it and kind of honing it in. Now for the next clip, we're from Yosemite again. And to show you what I mean, I could drag this clip all the way over. So we start from Glacier Point in the morning and then we have Half Point in the afternoon. And we'll drag that color correction over. And it kind of works. I'd actually say it works pretty nicely. Let's see. It's actually a little bit too much orange, but it does work. But if I was to drag it over to Mammoth, it brings out way too much orange in the snow and it just doesn't look that nice. So, hop into this. And with this clip, I remember editing this clip in my Yosemite 2016 edit. I'll link that down below if you guys want to check it out. And what I did was bust up that exposure, contrast, bring out the whites, shadows, and blacks, bring out a little bit of orange, add a little bit of the film look, Sharpen it by 10, vibrance 20, do like 90 for the saturation. Tint balance, we want the shadows to be a little bit orange, highlights to be a little bit blue. Then the curves, we'll bring down those blacks, bring up the midtones, and then crush those blacks. Add a little bit of a vignette, be like negative, oh, negative 4 is way too big. Negative 0.5 is good. And then feather that a bit. And that's actually way too dark. So we'll bring up those blacks. So we went from that really dull image to this. We could even feather that vignette a little more. There we go. And then this clip, so what we could do is just drag that over. And you can see that we are facing the sun here. So we have more light in the frame. But now the sun's being hidden by a bunch of trees. So it's all dark over here but the color still works. So all we could do with that, let's go up to color correction, we could bring out the shadows, bring out the exposure a bit, drop the shadows, and there we go. So instead of having two separate layers for that, when I know that they're both from the same environment, we could just use one. And for the last clip, bring out the exposure a bit, nothing too crazy. This is the big key right here, bring up the contrast, bring up the highlights a bit, shadows, bring down those blacks, then the whites, add a little bit of a faded film look to it, sharpen it by 10, vibrance will go 20, and then saturation 90, tint balance, let's test this out, shadows warm, highlights cool, we actually bring those highlights back to normal, so I want those shadows to be peeking through, so we'll jump into the curves, and we'll bring down those blacks, bring up the midtones, and then crush the blacks again to get that faded film look. And then we can go into the hue saturation curve. We can really bring out those orange tones. We can mess with the green. There's not too much green there. And then we can go into the blues. And we'll move down to the color wheels. And we'll keep those shadows up a bit. 
bring up those midtones, and we don't even need to touch these highlights. When you've already shot a bunch of environments, and you get this kind of editing effect that you already like, you can go up into the effect controls, make sure you have your adjustment layer highlighted, and you go up to the Mitri color, and you right click on it, save preset, and then you can name it. So I'll do Thomas Snow Preset. And then we save that. And then what we could do is delete that. And then we'll go into editing. We'll go into presets. And you can see that there it is, Thomas Snow Preset. Drop that on and voila. When we have a shot like this that's overcast and it's snowing and we want to really bring out those trees in the darker tones, we could drop this on it as a foundation so we can go through and edit it all together. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like and a comment down below and let me know what you thought. Now I'm thinking about doing a Q&A video, so leave a question down below for a video later on that I'll accumulate all these questions together. I really want to sit down and kind of have a casual conversation where I answer your guys' questions. Hit me up on social media, at Thomas Kovacic. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. As always, keep it easy. Peace.